Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of The Marketing Natives. This is a fun episode. We're talking about websites, especially if you are a local business. This is absolutely crucial. If you've been thinking about a new website, if you've been thinking about a redesign, these things are absolutely important for you and your business because if you just build a site and you expect people to go there, um, you're probably in the majority, but there's a lot of things that you need to do. On this episode, we're talking about website performance and a common mistakes that are slowing down your site. We're talking about why you should have one clear call to action and why personality is crucial for conversions on your site. Enjoy. This is the Marketing Natives, providing actionable ways to grow, improve, and succeed in your business. And now, your hosts, Christian and Aaron. All right, so there are several things here that um, we're going to talk about. And if you're confused about the title, um, this is going to make more sense now. Cool. So number one is performance. What I Okay, so for here, I guess whenever we have our notes, slow websites, you're talking about just speed, right? Or performance can be like the conversion rate on the site. Are we talking e-commerce? Are we talking um, or just in general? E-commerce, informational? So I'm just trying to ask from, a, like, I'm trying to understand from this standpoint. Um, any website. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're talking about, for example, yeah, you make an e-commerce website and you don't care about the performance of it, then this is just going to be, yeah, really slow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things are not going to be working properly as well. So, um, I mean, it, performance, I think, almost equals speed majority of the time. Um, same with, you know, if you have an informational website or even a blog post and um yeah performance is not there you know things are loading really slowly you lose people lose interest pretty quickly um so it's important to not just build a website and make it look cool and good um but also look at all the things that you're putting in so for example um like on a blog post page mm -hmm. um you could include things like uh, the share buttons right to very easily share on on social media right you could include a a bar at the top that as you're scrolling it tells you you know how far along you're at on this page yeah it's um, kind of cool you could have um i mean you could have a, a bunch of different things that uh, for example if you're not on a wordpress website all those little things require Plug different plugins right yeah. and these different plugins they have to um, basically connect to those servers and those databases, right, to pull that information. Um, so things like that, adding plugins to a simple page like a blog post page um, could affect the performance of that page. Um, same goes for, um, you know, if we're not talking about speed, maybe performance could be um, how well does it perform on different browsers, right? How well does it perform on different devices? What do you mean, like how still how quickly it loads or like? Yeah. Um, and then like, I mean, maybe not the quickness, but also... Um, it could be that whatever type of code that you're using um, on this browser, it doesn't necessarily work the same on this other browser. So like things like, I don't know, like Flexbox, for example. I mean, that's pretty well known and pretty pretty you know used on all the browsers. Um, but when something new like that comes out, um, which Flexbox just allows you to manipulate the content and move it, you know, differently than you used to before. Okay. Um, but new technologies like that, the browsers actually have to update to accommodate for that new technology hmm. for Flexbox, for example. Um, and if the browser and you're using that new technology because you're using a brand new, I don't know, website builder, but then there's several browsers that don't support that technology. Um, then you're kind of dead in the water. Or maybe your website doesn't look as well to a lot of your customers. Um, so I think performance just needs to be top of mind um, in looking at things like speed looking at things like how does your website look and react on different browsers and different devices. So my question um, for you, fine. and I guess people are wondering too, is how do you make your website faster? Because I, if I don't, if I'm building something, let's say for example on Webflow or Shopify or something like that. I mean, we I'm would have to do <laughs> three other podcasts <laughs> on how to do that. Well, like what's the biggest thing, I guess, we'll give them one, like what's the number one way to like instantly make your website a little bit faster? Um, I guess... Like I said, plugins, um, I would strip down 
any plugins from from your website um you probably if, especially if you're starting out you probably don't need a lot of the gadgets and features um that bare websites have or can right. afford right um so i would say you know plugins and then um obviously images um images and videos um i would probably deter from using like videos on the background where they're out of so play. don't upload the video to the website <laughs> like do it you know what i'm saying like uh where you see sometimes where people literally like upload the big video on their website and it's like it just takes forever to either like load that page or start it i don't know i've just have seen it myself where you go there and there's a uh, i don't know a three minute video that they expect you to watch it's like at the very like the first thing you see is like the three minute video you gotta like either push play or it's already started to load yeah, I mean the the ones that auto load that to just play in the background. I mean, yeah, again, they look nice and whatever, but I mean, is that really what's gonna move the needle forward on your website and make people right. you know convert? So, um, sure, it might look cool, but you always need to look at how is it affecting the speed of the website? How is it affecting you know the performance? You know how people navigate through the website. Gotcha. Um, so that's more important, and that's why I, I would say that's more important than having a cool video. You could probably have an image in right. place. And you would still get the conversions that you want, you know, and, and point and have your point come across um, on the website. So a lot of times these videos, they just they're just there for looks, right? Right. Um, they don't really serve a purpose. They don't tell a story. Um, some of them might. Right. But, a lot of it's just like a drone shot of something for for whatever reason. There's a drone shot of your mm-hmm. building. Yeah. So um, again, I think that performance just needs to be a priority over some of these other things where it just looks cool or mm-hmm. you want that feature. Um, I will say focus first on the performance, make sure that your website is fast. Um, and then a, a, the one place that I would tell you to go to, to check for speed and performance would be gtmetrics.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can run a free speed report in there. Um, and that actually will give you a list of different things that um, you can do to your website. Um, mm-hmm. It'll probably tell you some things about images, it will tell you about the JavaScript and different plugins that you have um, installed. Um, but yeah, performance needs to be a priority. All right, number two, we said here to have a clear call to action. Um, and maybe there's too many that are on the site. So like whenever you're like, so walk me through, I guess, Christian, if you were like designing a site, when you're saying a call to action, you're just saying like, all right, this is what we want people to do when they go to that hero image. But how many call to actions or what does it mean by what do you think is not a clear call to action i guess i mean maybe having again too many i feel like that's the the biggest drawback that we see on a lot of websites it's having too many call to actions um especially like on the homepage. um instead of the homepage should be able to sell something right mm-hmm. uh, either you know tell a story to sell something um or give you enough information um about this one particular thing in order to convert that person. Right. Um, and that's like, and I mean, we talked about this, you know, with uh, like story brand and, mm-hmm. and how websites, um, they need to be able to walk the customer through some sort of journey um, in order to understand your product a little bit better. Um, so including things like, you know, testimonials, um, including um, the, um, what we call like the, oh my gosh. What section are you talking about? um social proof social um, proof yeah okay uh, including so yeah, including mind. logos like you know including logos that are you know that your customers will recognize um that enhances the social proof of of that particular page um so just having a clear call to action a, a lot of people also want to have for example two or three buttons that's like oh call us or you can email us <laughs> or you know you can also click on this email button that will just open up your email client on your computer right um so having just that one thing that's like okay maybe it's scheduled this phone call right right and that will take that button it's throughout the whole website and no matter what service no matter what product you're interested in um it's always you're going to schedule that phone call right um, with them um it doesn't have to be a scheduled phone call it could be you know fill out this application one form or, or form. this application yeah um so yeah just having a one clear call to action throughout the website and making it consistent Mm -hmm. yeah definitely i think like you said it's more so just confusing like i go to other marketing websites too or like anybody else like if we're looking at something and it's just 
Yeah, uh, do this, and then there's other this other option. I think uh, restaurants are obviously the worst, too. It's like, do you want me to call you? Do you want me to look at the menu? Do you want me to go get delivery? What about takeout? Like, they just want, I think restaurants are just, sorry for the restaurant people, they just want, all right, I want you to do everything. And then it's just super confusing. And then I can't even find their menu, side note. But <laughs> there's no button for their menu. And or if you do click it, it's like download this PDF versus looking at it. So, yeah. I, Call to actions, absolutely. So should they, and like uh, to clarify, you're just saying like if there's if you want them to do one thing, that call to action should be the same. Like, hey, schedule the call, and it's all the way down or whatever. Like that's the main thing, not three different options, I guess. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's all about having that one call to action, and then being consistent throughout the website um, by having that same schedule now mm -hmm. um, throughout the website, where, where it takes you to the same place. Um, and then I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't, you can't have options, for example, like in the contact page. Sure. You can have, you know, your phone number and mm -hmm. any other additional information, uh, maybe a different type of form if they need right. to contact you about something. But um, I would say anywhere else on the website, you need to have that one call to action um, that will take him to that one place. <laughs> Hey, local business owners, if you're ready to grow your business online without having to work more in your business and you can spend more time on it, we created a free training on how to attract, qualify, and convert more leads online. It's 38 minutes. It's going to take a little bit of your time, but it's going to have a huge benefit. It's completely free. Make sure you click below in the description, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on the podcast, everything's there that you need. Go grab the training now. Um, yeah, number three, it's, uh, websites usually don't have any personality. Um, so again, a lot of people, a lot of people maybe create websites that are heavily templated, you know, like from Squarespace or Wix, um, and they just want to have a website up and running and that's it. Um, and they negate things like what you're actually going to say on the website, mm -hmm. right? Um, the copy, the, your story. Um, how you're actually selling people um, into your product? What makes you unique? What are your benefits? Right. Um, I think you know the copy is super, super important uh, yeah, on how yeah. you say things because um, it, it. I think that's one of the best ways to yeah portray your like personality. Um, I think you can do pictures and you know maybe videos and link YouTube videos and things like that. But um, I think the copy is very important and it it will highly differentiate you from someone else because mm -hmm. everyone else is going the old born route of yes please would you like to contact us fill out this form versus like yo let's get in touch we can't yeah. wait to party with you or something yeah. you know bid me up scotty like yeah, yeah like just adding cool stuff like that in your copy um will definitely make you very unique um and like we're saying here i mean we're, we're trying to tell you that you know putting this out putting a website out and just leaving your regular old copy in there um it might serve the purpose but actually focusing on that copy um and your personality and inserting that personality into the website um it's gonna go leaps and bounds gonna do way better than you know your competition or other websites right um, and why know. would you like redesign the site to do the exact same thing like or if you're yeah if you're starting from scratch why would you go and just put something up to put something up or if you're redesigning and you know you need a redesign why would you put the exact same thing back on the site if it didn't work before why is it going to work now just because it looks a little bit better and i guess from what you've said earlier like okay if it's slower and they don't have a clear call to actions and then the call to action or the copy is the same getting a new site doesn't even make sense so it's like the website you need a new website so it's time to make those changes too mm -hmm. yeah and like i mean it doesn't have to be necessarily just a copy um, you can insert, like I said, personality, you know, within the picture that you use. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the most common thing that you see when people put personality into the websites, it's like the profile photos. Like, yeah. Where you have a little fun there. Yeah. You have a little, um, uh, fun picture, um, to show. So that's probably the most that you see, um, when people are maybe putting in a little bit of more, their personality. Into They're the trying to be a little edgy. Like we're professional ish. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think 10 years ago, it was probably different than what it is now. Like people are a little bit more lenient. Like we would hire an accountant who said like, you know, hey, look, we're going to crunch the numbers. We're going to help your business grow. Like if they're just like, this is what we're going to offer, but then they were fun with the text. I think it's more like accepting now mm -hmm. than it was probably 10 years ago where it was like, you know, so 
I guess it's more so get get along with the times of, you know, what people want and to keep them entertained, I guess, too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, copy images and then video um, are all great ways to mm-hmm. insert personality into the website. All right. The next one we have here is high quality design helps you make a big impact. Um, and I think I can't remember what the number is or like how they measure it, but like a good design will make people purchase more. So like if it's the packaging, if it's like a, like I think of just, uh, you know, going to McDonald's or going to Target or something like that, you see it everywhere. But even on a website, if it just looks like, I was on a guy's site last week, it was an insurance site. It was made in 2011 and it looked like it was made in 2011. It's just like boxes and like half of it didn't fit the screen. I'm like, does this guy even still in business? But if he would add a nice, clean, sleek, like our insurance guys are actually have like a very 2020 type of website. It's like you want to buy from those guys because it's like, oh, they know what they're doing. They know what's going on. And I don't know what it is, but we're just drawn to it. I don't know if you know more about like the psychological part of it or not. But no, but I mean, it's a it, it even goes to, you know, we say high quality, like having like fuzzy images or fuzzy logos. Yeah, um, that just draws you back you're like turns off yeah yeah, this is a huge turn off on 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 website so um again i think the the high quality um also takes into consideration um like the conversion right of of these people who are visiting your website um so when we're saying high quality yeah we're looking at um the type of fonts that you're using you mm-hmm. know, using something more unique than maybe open sands or Montserrat, which like every aerial. Is it, aerial you know so like um yeah using something you know that other people are not using um make sure that your images are high quality images mm-hmm. um while at the same time going back to number one to performance <laughs> right uh to make sure that it's not bogging down the website uh, as far as speed um but yeah th- we think like high quality design translate i guess high quality design mixed with that keeping the conversion in mind and how your audience is going to navigate this website um this was really gonna make a big impact on on, on the website overall um so that, those are things that again yeah you're not just making a website you need to take into consideration you know the the high quality images the high quality videos the high quality obviously thinking about performance um and then translating that into okay how is this person once they land on my home page uh what do i want them to do right again going back to the call to action um and why would they click on that call to action um what what do i need to tell this person about me about the company about my products um that will make them oh yeah i, need I have this. a solution here. yeah i have yeah. a solution and you need this from me right um, because of these things that i'm showing you um so it's, not, it's important not to look at the competition and maybe the competition has they have a video on their hero section then they have a um Maybe these are our products and then they have testimonials and then they have a footer. And like, I think it's good to look at the competition, but it's also good to look at how your customer is going to navigate through the website. Someone who yeah. doesn't know anything about it. Um, why would they, you know, purchase from you or why would they click that schedule a call button? Yeah. And if they don't have any reason or like you have nothing to base off the fact that the competition's like, oh, dang, we're looking at you. Like, oh, we're looking over here and we're looking over here. And then you create the exact same thing, which mm-hmm. is like, why we talked about in episode 169, which is standing out from the competition. So go listen to that. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Our last one here is probably one of the most important parts, especially for Google and for you to be found is to have a blog or a means to add content um, is, is absolutely crucial. So we have our podcast, which you guys are listening to or watching. Uh, We put that on the website, which is kind of considered a blog. So we update the content that way. We also do have a blog page, but you need to have something that updates your website consistently Mm -hmm. um, so that Google, hey, these guys are doing something besides like the insurance guy I mentioned earlier, the 2011 guy. He's never had a blog. I don't think he's ever touched his website. He told me as a sidebar, he told me he hasn't been able to log into his GoDaddy website builder for a couple of years. So I know for sure he isn't updating his site. Oh, um, but that's, I mean, neither here nor there. But the point is, if you're not updating your content, Google's like, ah, oh, you're just kind of like, you're out there. Like, we're not going to give any, um, you know, rankings to somebody who isn't adding value to their customers. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of business owners are like that where, okay, I build the website and they expect 
traffic just to pour in. Yeah, why doesn't you know, it work that way? The website goes live. So uh, that's why you know we always you know encourage them to have a blog um, and just I mean if you don't have a huge strategy or anything like really well thought out like still put out content something um, and and do something where again going back to the previous episode consistent right um, be consistent with the the way that you're posting um, on your website but absolutely just having the website with your information that's not enough. You need to create something like a blog or a podcast mm -hmm. um, or maybe videos where you're constantly updating the content on on your website. Nice. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Um, I know you've got a lot out of this. We're going to have show notes and we're also, if you're watching on YouTube, you've got to see some uh, some visuals. But if you are listening on the podcast and you have been listening for a while, please make, to, make sure to leave us an honest rating review on Apple Podcasts. That's how we grow. And if you've been watching on YouTube, also make sure to hit that subscribe button. At the time of this recording, we're probably over 2,000 subscribers, but we'd love for you to be one of those as well. Um, and we put out new content for local businesses to grow their business every single week. Um, we could be talking about websites and what you need to have there. We could be talking about online marketing, but it's everything focused on local businesses. So if that's you, uh, make sure you subscribe and we'll put out content every week to help you do that. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. The Marketing Natives Podcast is a production of Bit Branding. 